Yuri, good to see you. Great seeing you again. You well? Very well, thank you. Thank you very much for hosting us here at Glen Eagles, looking fantastic as always. We're going to go down into the grouse butts and start doing a bit of an introduction to driven grouse shooting, right? So we're going to cover off some of the safety points, which are obviously paramount with all forms of shooting, but particularly this form of shooting. And then once we've gone through that, we're going to start working through some of the technical points of taking on a driven target out in front and how to turn on to some slightly more side on birds that are going to be crossing a little bit more. So that sound good to you? Super. Cool. Look forward to it. Good. Let's see if we can hit some. I know you've shot grouse before. For people that haven't shot grouse before, one of the first things is when you come into the butts, you've got to be really aware of your surroundings. Your neighboring guns and the beating line, okay, really, really important. Before you get the gun out, before you worry about your sticks, before you worry about loading up, look around, pay attention, and let it all sink in. Going on to safety equipment, ear protection, everyone will be familiar with. Secondly, and more important when grouse shooting than any other time, is eye protection, okay? They've got to be impact resistant lenses, mm -hmm. something that's comfortable, gives you good coverage. There is a chance of pellets flying around close by. Mm -hmm. You wanna be better safe than sorry. You've only got two eyes, look after them. As you know, mm -hmm. when you come into a grouse butt, you're gonna be shooting low fast birds. You're gonna be provided with a set of sticks, okay? It's our responsibility as shooters to set the sticks up to enable us to be 100% safe and not be able to swing through the line and reach our neighboring guns. So once you've come in, you're gonna find a position that you're gonna be comfortable shooting from. A good rule of thumb is always push yourself up against the grouse butt. That way, when you do put your sticks in, you've got a constant point. You're not going to be moving around. The more you move around in the grouse butt, the less relevant the sticks become. So if you set your sticks up from this position and then you start shooting from here, you've then given yourself an extra 10 or 15 degrees angle. You mm -hmm. could start swinging into your neighbors. OK, so very, very important. Obviously, you can set the height on them. Same thing. We don't want you to be able to swing through the line. You want to be able to come over the top and then shoot out back. Mm -hmm. where applicable. And I guess on each grout shoot, the distance between the various butts is, differs? Exactly, yeah. you'll have different layout of the butts. You'll yeah. sometimes find that if you're on a slope, there's one butt slightly above you. Yeah. If you're on, a, on an incline, one butt slightly below you. Again, it just comes back to really paying attention to your surroundings. If you're on the end butt, or probably the end two butts, mm -hmm. you're going to be aware that at the start of the drive, you're going to see the flankers. Acknowledge them and also be aware that they're going to be moving throughout the drive. Mm. So once you've set your sticks at the start, don't feel that they've got to stay there for the rest of the day. You know, you are going to be aware if the flankers are starting to pull in, start pulling your sticks in, okay? Again, it's coming down to always being aware it's a changing fluid situation, move your sticks accordingly. If you're ever in doubt, tighten them up. Have you shot the Pro Fibre range before? I have. Yeah? I have. Yeah, great cartridge. Super, super shell. We stock them at Glen Eagles and can order them in for anyone looking to use them or try them out. Perfect. Obviously on clays today, we don't need to go shooting anything too uh, extreme. When we're shooting the real stuff, obviously we up the load a little bit more. Sure. I tend to go to shot size six. I don't mm -hmm. really see the value in going anymore. And that's where mm -hmm. the driven grouse, copper wash shot, fiber mm -hmm. wad, 30 gram and 28 gram, absolutely perfect for the job. Super smooth, especially if you're shooting it side by side, mm -hmm. minimal recoil, yeah. ideal. And I can't see why you'd need anything more. <laughs> What do you think, Ed? Okay, good shooting for a start. Yeah. Hitting plenty of birds, which is great to see. As with lots of people, there's a couple of little tweaks that we can make, which should hopefully make the whole job feel a little bit easier, a little bit more consistent. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to be actually looking at your gun mount itself. There's no problem with where it's sitting in your shoulder, but there's something we can do with between your hands as the gun's coming into your shoulder that's going to make the shot feel a little bit more concise and a bit more controlled. Mm -hmm. So one of the videos we've just done has been on high pheasants where we're trying to get people to actively have a big long swing through. That's not what we're trying to achieve on driven grouse. To shoot this driven bird out in front quite concisely, we're going to be shooting over the front foot with quite a short, punchy, instinctive right. move. Okay. What I'd like to say at the moment is your mm. backhand when you're mounting the gun is doing a lot of work. So what's causing the, the gun to then seesaw? So as your backhand comes up, the barrels are dropping down and it's forcing you to have quite a big rushed shot. You're hitting loads Playing of catch birds. Up. Exactly. Yeah. You're hitting loads of birds, but you're hitting loads of birds despite what you're doing. Mm. We can make it feel a bit slower and a bit easier. Shooting them quite late. So as yeah, you're, you're yeah. as a consequence of the mount, you're having to take the birds on a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And as you'll notice, as they get to about this point, they almost appear to speed mm. up and it feels like it's a bit of a panic. So okay. I probably wouldn't get a second shot in front. It would make it tough. Yeah. And if you're looking at trying to take a second bird on, then you've run out of space. Okay. So what we're going to try and change, instead of being a bit more heavy with the backhand, 
and mounting up and dropping the barrels down, we're going to try and work even between the hands. So both hands are going to work in unison, coming up evenly. So the barrels are coming up parallel to the ground. And as soon as it hits your face, you're going to be connected just off the back of the bird. You can then make a very short move. It should feel a little bit more punchy and a little bit tighter. So there shouldn't be all of this excess movement. Okay. So just to start with, get yourself used to the idea of both hands working at the yep. same pace and the barrels coming slowly and smoothly up parallel to the ground. So as soon as it connects onto your face, you're going to be just on the back edge of the bird. Okay. It should feel like you've got less work and more time. And you may find as a consequence, you actually end up shooting the bird earlier, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but fingers crossed, right. that's where we end with it. Okay. Great. The mount's looking better. One of the things you're starting to see here is that because you've saved yourself the time with the mount, you're not having to come from mm. down here so much, you're actually starting in front of the bird. Yeah. And when you start in front, in front of the, the bird, bird. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're mounting in front. And when you mount in front, you lose the target mm. behind you. So you're having to guess. As you move up, think of moving into the tail feathers and then pushing into the front of the bird mm. rather than just purely trying to shortcut it and chop the bird off, okay? okay. That's the shot, Yuri. Okay. Nice. Look at that. Super, super yeah. early, but still under control. So there's no unnecessary chasing. There was no panic. Nice, smooth mount straight into the front of the bird. It's Switch quite stop. interesting. You, you feel like you're rushing less. You have a lot more time. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a slower move, but you're having to do less with the gun. So you're, you're maximizing your time with the bird rather than trying to chase it down all the time. It's such a small change. Yeah. such a big result. It's, it's amazing how sometimes these little tweaks can just make the whole job easier for you. And that's what it's about. It's making it easier and more consistent for you to be able to do your job humanely. Thank you, Ed. My pleasure. Okay, Yuri, so we've done the straight driven target. I think you've pretty much mastered that now, which is good. Going to move on to a slightly more demanding target here. It's going to be a fast right-handed bird and we're going to try and introduce a little bit of footwork. So rather than try to keep yourself planted in one place mm -hmm. and just shoot everything mm -hmm. out in front of mm -hmm. you, we're going to get you used to turning into the bird and starting to move away from the target. Okay? okay. Great. Cool. What's happening is as you're looking back, your barrels are coming back and then you're chasing the bird down again. So get comfortable with the idea of with your gun hole being slightly further out, mm -hmm. the eyes come back, see the target, then you initiate the mount and go with the bird rather than coming back and then going through, through it. So you're bird, almost yeah. going in two directions. You're going back to where you originally mm -hmm. wanted to go mm -hmm. and then pushing through. The setup's great. What That's we've got to try default. and get you used to doing yeah. is seeing the bird and then moving in the same plane as it rather mm -hmm. than trying to go back onto autopilot, which is coming back way behind the bird and mm -hmm. pushing through. So setup good, eyes back. And as soon as you see the bird, mount's going to start moving. When it hits your shoulder, you're on or just in front of the bird. Short stretch, pull the trigger. Yeah, just yeah. the biggest one on the heather there. If you use that as like a lateral marker, okay, and then you push your eyes back to the left, mm -hmm. what was happening before is you were starting here, you go and pull, which is why it's feeling a bit messy. If we can start here, eyes left, pull, boom. Yep. Got you. Yeah, just a bit less busy. Mm -hmm. It's going to make it feel all the smoother and the easier for mm -hmm. you. Okay, Yuri, so that was really, really good. Um, super, super smooth shooting on those last few shots. I think that's starting to feel a little bit more natural for you. Yeah. So to, to put a summary on it, open yourself up for the wider targets with your feet to allow yourself to have more room to finish a shot off so you don't stop the gun mm -hmm. and go behind. That's an issue for you off your right side especially. Don't come from so far behind the target. Similar problem to what you had on the straight driven, but a bit more pronounced here. You're really coming far behind the target and basically by the time you got to your sticks, you'd run out of space and you were always behind the bird. Mm -hmm. So starting that little bit further in front, slow, smooth mount and a nice stretch, it just slows the whole thing down for you, gives you more time, gives you more room. Mm -hmm. The process feels easier. It's incredible. Just a small tweak here it makes a big difference out there. Felt like I had loads of time. And when I stopped thinking about it, clay started to break. Every time you introduce something new, it takes a few shots for it to start feeling yeah. natural, but you look really, really good with that. So yeah, well done. Good thank work. Thank you, Ed.